Um, so I'm going to tell you um, the tale of two studies, which is 815, 702, and 705. And you've heard um, Larry give a lot of, um, very eloquently telling you the, the scientific rationale uh, for it. And I'm going to tell you um, how we executed this. So this is the tale of execution, and it's a tale of um, how you operationalize uh, those schemas in, in real life. So we know that UNAIDS has declared, um, um, in terms of epidemic control, that if we could get a 90% reduction in incidence from what it was in 2010, uh, we could probably get um, epidemic control. So epidemic, epidemic, epidemic control, which is defined as less than one in 10,000 per year, let's just take South Africa for example. So if we, um, um, in, in um, 2018, uh, our our incidence, of, our incidence of it was 11.5 per, per thousand. And to get to epidemic control by 2030, we would need a 91% drop in the number of infections. And that's quite formidable, which means that we need something that's quite disruptive. And um, hopefully that's going to be an HIV vaccine. Um, just quickly, in one slide, I'll summarize everything that, that Larry said. Um, and this is courtesy um, of, from, of Mary and... and and um, Julie. So we have um, uh, two, two, two approaches in, in, in the HVTN, and that is the empirical and the theoretical, and one is looking at non-neutralizing antibodies, and the other one is looking at neutralizing an antibodies, either using monoclonal antibodies or inducing um, vaccines that induce monoclonal antibodies. And this is our portfolio, and hopefully um, uh, there will even be a PMTCT intervention uh, trying to prevent breast milk transmission either by looking at vaccines that induce um, body neutralizing antibodies or um, with monoclonal antibodies um, to, breast, to prevent breast milk transmission. So our three uh, prong strategy in the field um, is the clade C approach, uh, which is happening in sub-Saharan Africa, taking the RV144 and adapting it to clade C, uh, looking at a global vaccine approach, working with Dan and the J&J, &J, looking at um, trying to find a vaccine that you won't have to be clade specific. And then you've heard a lot, copious amounts uh, from Larry and Mike about uh, 703, 704. So in terms of 702 or Ochambu, can you all say that? Ochambu? Um, this is the, the pox protein heterologous prime boost. Um, fully enrolled, 5,407 people, uh, men and women, um, in South Africa only. And uh, um, this is the RV144 regimen, adapted C, and we went ahead with the study uh, once we hit the go-no-go -no -go criteria in HV10-100. Uh, um, uh, Imbocoda uh, is um, also fully enrolled, and this is the Air26 um, double prime, double boost um, study um, uh, advanced to proof of concept once there was protection seen in the non-human primate study. And this is happening in uh, heterosexual uh, women in sub-Saharan Africa. So the basis of 702 um, was based from uh, on the basis of 702 was based on RV144. Um, we saw the vaccine um, waning. Um, we've spoken a lot about the, the 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 correlates and the issue of trying to prevent the waning of the um, of, of the vaccine-induced immune responses, which is why um, in 702 um, we have um, added the boost a boost at 12 and a boost at 18 months. Um, to try and make sure that the vaccine is more durable. So 702 is conducted in 14 trial sites in South Africa. We have about 600 st uh, study personnel. So this is around 30 to 40, p 40 st uh, research staff at each site. We've developed sites in places there that there was never ever clinical trial capacity. Um, enrolled um, 5,400. And we already have, um, at this moment in time, over 200,000 PBMC vials. In our, in our fridges. In our repository, we have, our, we have um, almost a thousand dry blood spots, um, um, almost a quarter of a million plasma vials, almost half a million serum vials, and um, almost 10,000 stool swabs um, in our repository. This just shows you the enrollment um, over time um, and shows you our visits per day by month. So at the heights of enrollment, um, we were seeing about 200 participants a day um, um, at, um, at a site level. And this is just 702. It gets better. 
For 705, um, you've, heard, you've heard a little bit from, from Larry based on the, the non-human primate data showing that um, an ad prime, ad boost uh, was the best regimen with a 67% reduction after six challenges, and this was published by Dan in The Lancet. So we moved ahead um, based on that to do this proof of concept first in women. If a vaccine doesn't work in women, who cares what happens in men? So um, we wanted to know how this vaccine would work and if it would work in, in, in women in a clade C area. And so what we have is a, um, the, the, a mosaic study, a mosaic um, um, approach and um, um, with the trimeric envelope clade C. Um, Larry showed this, so I won't go into it uh, in, into great detail. This just shows you the enrollment. Um, 23 sites in five countries, also almost 600 study staff, uh, 2,637 enrolled, and over 100,000 PPMC vials in our fridge. Repository as well, um, enormous amount of dry blood spots, uh, plasma, serum, uh, cervical vaginal secretions, and vaginal swabs um, waiting to be used um, in, um, uh, once we fully um, um, have executed the study. And this just shows you the, the rapid enrollment into 705. And again, just looking, so this is just 705 now. I um, at our peak enrollment, uh, we were seeing around 100 um, visits a day for 705. So the, the countries were very busy. So, so executing a, a phase three vaccine trial, um, you have to be quite nimble in the field. And we spent a lot of time uh, making sure that um, the sites knew the epidemic. And uh, there would be often time when we would um, enroll into, our, into the, 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 the study, we would stop sites and get them to recalibrate when we felt that they weren't bringing us the correct uh, participants. And so we spent a lot of time um, changing um, how we enrolled, uh, retraining people, and making sure um, that we got to uh, the sites where uh, we were getting the right um, incidents. In some cases, when we were unsure about the sites, they had to submit their enrollment participants to us so that we could check to make sure that they were um, the right participants. We only had one chance. We've got two chances to get this right. And so we have to make sure that we bring the right participants into the studies uh, so that we can get the endpoints so we can understand what happened. And so it, this might look easy, and uh, Larry showed some beautiful data um, in the lab, uh, but executing a clinical trial and making sure you, you choreograph the right participants is another, um, another science altogether. So you can see um, we were enrolled about 70% women in 702, and um, mentioned again the, the amount of women in 705, had about two sexual partners um, in the last 30 days, and we spent a lot of time about those sexual partners. Um, how many times, who they were, were they main partners, um, frequency of sex in 24 hours, so we wanted to know we were getting the right people. Uh, worked very hard at getting young people, and you can see that we, we moved a whole year down in 705, um, and tried to make sure that the majority of the, of the participants were, were under 25, and um, if sites were enrolling older women, they would have to be, make a very compelling argument why they thought these older women were um, at risk for HIV. Uh, focused on, on people who weren't using condoms, who um, most people didn't know their HIV status, and worked also very hard to make sure that we, get, we got um, women in that um, were having sex with older men, um, as, as according to the, 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 the epidemic in South Africa. Transactional sex. Worked very hard. Um, in 705, we managed to tap into a huge uh, transactional sex uh, program, um, and uh, where it was one in, one in um, 20%, one in five in 702, we went to almost 50% in 705. Very important um, not to have partners. Your partner must not live with you if you want to be at risk. So we, we um, make sure that um, the people we bring in don't have partners living with them. The biggest risk factor for getting HIV is actually living at home not having a partner with you. Um, having other partners, so a lot of people knew that their partners were, ha that their partners were having other partners. This is chlamydia at baseline, any STD, a third of our participants. And we worked on a different, we worked on a different score, so the HV10 has its own risk score. We don't use the voice risk score, 
we developed our own. Um, so we have a risk score of about 11 and uh, tried to make sure that we could um, get the right risk score for, for these women. In terms of contraception, very interesting, you can see that the method mix it changed. And I think obviously this is a time when we were waiting for the ETHA study. And so um, there was a lot of emphasis, uh, emphasis on um, method mix and also because we went outside South Africa. So South Africa loves Depo-Provera. And so you can see 702 is Depo-Provera um, tropic, whereas the rest of um, um, Africa do have a, a much a wider method mix, but still injectables. Um, are overwhelmingly the most um, ex um, um, contraception that is the most acceptable. In, in 702, we enrolled men. Yes, um, I agree with you, Mike. We know very little about HIV or the, the dynamics of HIV in, in men and spend quite a lot of time trying to find um, these men that would be at risk for HIV acquisition. And so 702, uh, about, um, we had both uh, heterosexual and non-heterosexual men. And you can see, um, depending on whether you're heterosexual or non-heterosexual, we try to change the, 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 the profile of the men that we enroll. So if you're heterosexual, we want, we want the older men. And if you're non-heterosexual, we want the younger men. And we, we achieved that. Half our participants were, were circumcised. Um, very few used condoms. Um, very few knew what their status of their partners were. Um, mostly um, non-heterosexuals, we had less knowledge of what their partner status were and very few people uh, lived with their partners. Looking at um, the um, exchange of, 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 of gifts for sex, you can see that um, our non-heterosexual non men were more likely to be in, in, enrolled, in, engaged in, in transactional sex as compared to our heterosexual men. Um, an enormous amount of um, knowledge of other partners and you can see the, the STD, STIs at baseline much higher in our non-heterosexual men as compared to our heterosexual men. We have a behavior risk score of, of about of, of four um, for men, and you can see the distribution of, um, of, um, of, of risk, and um, the reporting of anal sex with non-heterosexuals was around 90%. So this are the trial sites, we three in 703, so you can also see the kind of capacity so these are all the sites that we, that we have been, in, been working with, and uh, these are the two trailblazers in, this, in heroic endeavor, um, the people that have enrolled all these, 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 these participants into this, the study. To do this, you also need a team on the ground that supports it. So we had to have um, a reconnaissance. We had, to, we had to have intel feeding into us so we could direct our, 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 our capacity, how retention was going, how recruitment was going. So we have clinical trial managers who make sure that the sites are developed, uh, implement the protocol, train, and make sure that there's good stakeholder engagement. We have a site liaison team who makes sure that the data is coming in is good so that they can withstand regulatory um, um, assurance. Um, we've had um, 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 GCP audits by our regulatory authority. Important for community engagement, so we had to make sure that there was good community engagement, safety monitoring, a whole lot of uh, physicians were trained in South Africa to manage the safety, uh, laboratory support um, um, with um, Julie who, who um, established a, a local lab in South Africa and together um, with the um, uh, um, making sure that um, people, it's a, it's a nightmare, the story of PBMC uh, quality assurance and the kind of work it takes, it takes six months to get a site to, um, to, have P to be PBMC compliant and to meet the standards that, the, that uh, Julie's lab has set. And obviously um, the protocol leadership uh, to make sure um, that we, who, the protocol leadership who choreographed um, the, the whole study. If you put 702 and 705 together, and these are some of the sites we're running both, you can see um, in the high, at the height of, of our time, we had over 250 participants per day um, at the site level coming, to, coming through to, um, to see participants. If you add 703 to, to this in sub-Saharan Africa, you can see that we were hitting almost three, three, um, 325 participants a day coming in to the sites. You can imagine all the data that's coming through as well, all the bloods and everything. You can imagine the, the machinery it takes. So just to look at that in terms of CRF pages, um, almost over half a million uh, CRF pages entered to date. Um, and and this, this just shows you the, the, how the, quick, the, the rapidity to um, bring in. So in terms of our AEs, 
84% of our AEs were, um, were submitted on time and with good um, data quality and data insurance. For 705, almost 200,000 total pages entered to date. Um, again, um, with, with magnificent reporting of AEs on time, uh, queries have gone down. You can see that in 702, 3.5, um, sorry, uh, 3.5 uh, queries per, per 100 pages, and in 702, 2.6 queries per 100 pages. Um, if you have a look at um, the 46,000 study visits already completed in 702, uh, let's just have a look. So this just shows you the sites, and you can see that in terms of vaccine administration visits, um, 128, almost 130,000 participant, participant visit hours, and in just a, a non-vaccination visit, around um, just over 60,000 participant visit hours done. For 705, um, um, almost 10,000 study visits completed in terms, of, in terms of vaccine administration visits, around uh, just under 35,000 participant visit hours, and for, non, for other visits, around 12,000. So these studies are still ongoing, um, and we are, are continuing to execute the, the vaccination program. In terms of dry blood spots collected for PrEP, around 5,000 between the three studies. And the PrEP uptake uh, for 702 and 705, 119 for 702, 2.2%. Uh, 91 in 705, around 3.5%. Um, we do offer PrEP for free. Um, so we have a PrEP program. So we, we pay for PrEP, we ship it out, and we also pay for the, the, the blood monitoring of the PrEP program. This is a, a, a collaboration between the HPTN and the MRC. So PrEP is provided free, and we also pay um, for the laboratory management um, um, monitoring of, of PrEP. PBMCs, again, at the, the vials in the fridge, but um, 35,000... 35, PBMC collections um, in all three studies. If you have a look at our HIV diagnostic algorithm run by the protocol, in HV10, 702, um, 30,000 um, HIV diagnostics, seven, 703, for almost 40,000, and um, 705, um, almost 11,000. And this is only run by five people um, at the NICD. So you can see how hard they're working to make sure that um, we understand who's truly infected with HIV and who, is, uh, who has VISP. Just looking at study completion, um, um, the infusions are obviously very special. We don't give these, you know, if you have a look um, in terms of retention, overall retention visits for 702 is around 91%, and uh, for 705 around 93%. So very good um, visit completion and um, retention. I'm just going to tell, this is a little story about um, how you keep people in the study, and this came from a recruiter um, at a, one of our trial sites and was telling us, you know, they have uh, amazing uh, retention rates and we wanted to know a little bit about why this team was so successful in uh, retaining their participants. And so they have about 93% uh, in 702 and 96% in 705. And, um, and uh, we wanted to really understand uh, why they did so well. And the first thing they, they told me was that they were passionate, passionate about retention. They take things personal about if they fail to bring a particip participant into the, the site, they take it personally. They take disappointment uh, very, ser they, uh, very seriously. And they, they get personal fulfillment when getting it right. And they run by the maxim, he left the 99 to go and find the one sheep missing. This is how our retention officers feel about getting the participants in. They're being so passionate that you forget that you work with a team. This keeps you so motivated. Sharing personal qualities with the team influences everyone. You must love your participants as your family, treat them as your own, and appreciate the difficulty of recruitment. Make sure that you know where your participants live. Be patient until you get the truth about where to find participants. Um, participants in South Africa change their SIM cards all the time because of the airtime. So make sure that you, you keep up with the, 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 the changing of the SIM cards. For those who get incarcerated, follow through, go to jail, and keep them, uh, keep, con keep contact to keep them encouraged. If people are employed, find new times to, to, to bring them in. Go and meet the employer, speak to the employer so that, that you can get the participant to come to get their vaccination. Uh, make sure that staff are encouraging and not discouraging. You must flag. Um, you must uh, not flag people, um, and you also must make sure that you give them, the give them nice food 
and rotate your, your, your meal uh, at, the, at the clinic. Good planning, open up Saturdays and Sundays, wake up um, early morning clinics, late afternoon clinics. These people are working on Saturday and Sunday. They're coming in at seven and they're leaving at, at nine at night. Um, make sure that you, you pay for transportation. Always keep in touch of people who are in, incarcerated and build your relationships with your participants. Just go the extra mile, don't break your promises and, um, and continue to educate participants between long breaks. So this is the kind of thing that our participants think about and how they, how they go the extra mile. One participant was becoming a Sangoma, uh, which is a traditional healer. And through her, her initiation um, program, um, the star site went to the, the, the Sangoma um, and said, can we take um, the vaccination? Can we do the bloods, even though she's having the ceremony? And uh, we're able to, um, to work with the Sangoma uh, so that the, the woman could get a vaccination and become a Sangoma as well. So just to go the extra mile and make sure and to understand that you're dealing with young people who are between the ages of 35, 18 to 35. So this is the kind of feeling that our, our, our retention officers feel about the study and how they take uh, their, in the, the, their retention um, very seriously and how they um, care about the, the, the participants and, and the studies. So I do want to acknowledge um, all the study staff um, all the community engagement teams, and most of all, the participants who have joined us on this journey. I have lots of slides, a lot of, a lot of um, acknowledgements. Um, I have wonderful co-chairs and a wonderful team um, uh, that work with us. A wonderful uh, medical officer, Mary Allen, um, who's the medical officer for 702. Um, for 702, just continuing, this is our sponsors, um, Sharp and Stats and um, the, the lab. Um, 702, just the site level, um, for 705, also wonderful uh, 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 co-chairs, Frank, Kathy, and Susan. Our sponsors for 705, um, all the site acknowledgements, everybody here takes a village. And then, as, of course, to, to acknowledge uh, Larry um, from the HV10 Core, the beautiful work that Julie's done, um, and, um, the, the, and the acknowledging, again, uh, Dades and, and Mary and um, for you know, continuing to, to have faith in us. So thank you very much.